Check it out, in this video I'm gonna be going over the process of bleach dyeing your own t-shirts. So I'm gonna be using a method where I actually cover up the design I want to be printed. So this is a super DIY and at home application to get some somewhat printed custom t-shirts. So by nature the bleach helps strip out some of those pigments in the actual t-shirt. So when using a darker garment like black or purple, you're gonna get these nice kind of almost white tones under it. Now be sure to go after something that is 100% cotton ideally. Anything that has a polyester blend to it will actually kind of have some of a gray undertone and your prints are definitely not going to look as vibrant. I accidentally forgot to double check the contents of a sweatshirt I did in this video and it turned out to have this really kind of funky gray color. So maybe if you're after that, go after that. But personally, I really like that orangey grime feel that bleaching out a black t-shirt gives. Also be sure to clear your area of anything that might get stained. That includes everything that you're wearing. Definitely wear an old t-shirt and some old pants and make sure it's in an area that's not going to have any overspray. Getting bleach on anything that is a fabric is going to be kind of detrimental to what it looks like now. So avoid those issues by working in an area that you can get totally messy in and then also wear some old clothes that you don't mind ruining. So I've got my design all prepped up. I'm gonna get started here with the plotter. So like I mentioned before, you can cut your stencil out with a ton of different mediums. I'm using the plotter because it's a fast, multi-purpose tool that you know allows me to reuse and reprint the same image a few times over. The only big characteristic you need for your stencil is that it's somewhat of a plastic medium so that the bleach won't bleed through. So paper and stuff won't really work because it'll have actually the chance that that bleach can saturate into the stencil. Whereas here with the plastic is that's gonna kind of resist any bleeding in there. So I've seen people use kind of plastic just sheeting. I've seen people use some wax paper from you know the, the produce store, but ideally something similar to a vinyl plastic will work great. The adhesive on the back of the vinyl sticker is an awesome addition too, because I can just stick it on there and then peel it right on off once I'm done. Prep my mat with a little bit extra spray tack. And I'm actually using some clear vinyl too that is kind of just a production choice. Now the color of the vinyl obviously doesn't matter. I went with the clear just because that means when I am you know, recording the video you can still see through the black t-shirt on the back side so it's pretty in line with what you're actually going to get at the end. That was just you know a, an artistic choice but ideally I've done it with black vinyl and green vinyl and whatever I had laying around so not too particular on that front. So I just sent the design over to the plotter. It's going to cut it right on out. So it will be good to weed everything out and get it stuck to a t-shirt. Alright, the cutting's done. Let's get this ripped off and started weeding. So for this t-shirt, I want the black area to be the actual design and then have that kind of bleached out spray around it. So for that reason, I'm just gonna weed out all the negative area and leave my design in there. So something I'll also need is a little backdrop to actually stuff inside the t-shirt to give a nice solid ground. So here we're just gonna cut something that's slightly wider than the actual t-shirt. That way it stretches it a little bit and gives you a nice smooth area to actually you know, apply and work with and gives you a nice backdrop as well. And then just slide that over your t-shirt and to the center of the chest area or wherever you want your actual design to be. So a helpful rule of thumb for alignment on a t-shirt, obviously I'm going to do mine right in the middle, but the top of the pattern should be about a hand's width away from the collar. That being said, some people like to use the bottom of the collar, some people like to use the top of the collar. So for shirts that are medium and small, I like to do from the top of the collar and kind of align it up to that point. For a large or an extra large, I like to do it from the bottom of the collar. You can also use the collar and tag to hopefully center it. So I'm going to pull my sticker off the backing and this transfer tape will help apply the original vinyl to my t-shirt. Now simply press that down, make sure all the vinyl has now stuck to the t-shirt and then you can pull up your transfer tape. So it looks like I missed weeding a couple of small details. I'm gonna just take those off now. 
So obviously the centralized piece of this project is a big bucket of bleach. These are, you know, five bucks for a huge gallon like this. So you really can't go wrong with having that as your, your printing medium. I also picked up some small sprayers. This was in the travel size section of Walmart, so it's just a little spritzer. Not sure what it's actually intended for, but that'll give us some kind of even spray mist. Then also like a little spray bottle. This can also give that wide plume, but then you know if you only press it in a little bit, you can kind of get those droplet spits. So I'll be filling these up. Now you can dilute your bleach as well. In the past when I've been doing this, obviously the more bleach in the solution, the faster it's gonna eat into and remove the black dye of the t-shirt. So I don't mind having this totally bleach. Um, I did do some test runs with reducing it down and having some water in there. I found that I had to do just way more passes with the diluted version, so I was ended up kind of saturating the t-shirt and I wasn't getting as clean of prints because some of that you know, bleach and the water mixture was leaching under my design. So I've opted for just keeping it as the entire bleach solution and that way it can set in and start working you know, as best it can right away. And also be sure to wash off the edge of the bottle just so you don't get anything on your hands while you're working. So I'm going to start out with the small bottle. This gives a really kind of consistent small spray. So that'll give me a nice way to kind of bleach out the bigger section. And then maybe do some spritzing and I even grab a paintbrush to kind of dip in here and do some splatter. Always good to have some paper towels on hand in case you need to you know, clean off or make sure there's no dripping. And you'll see this really start to work right away. So now there's a bunch of bleach kind of built up on the stencil, so I'm just going to pat it dry to make sure it doesn't totally set in around those edges. And that'll keep some of these edges hopefully a little bit more crisp. So I'm going to let this dry and totally set up, and then maybe go back with a second pass of the spray to lighten up some of this interior. So this is now dry to the touch, and you can see it's kind of set into that nice orangey color. I'm going to want to spray out some more in here, just to make sure that I get some of those details, but just a couple little extra spritz and maybe we'll get slightly down to a more white. Once again, just patting dry that top section so that it doesn't eat under any of these edges too hard. Now after letting it sit for probably 25 minutes and letting it totally dry, you can come peel up the last of your stencil. Now some of the bleach on top of the stencil didn't quite dry because it wasn't you know, setting into a fabric. So I'd just tap that down, maybe pat it off with some more paper towel before you go at it. You can see here that the mask is really, really tight with that vinyl decal. It definitely has a really crisp edge. And here is kind of a, an area where a big droplet came down and kind of bled under it. But altogether, I really like how it turns out. And this adds a ton of uniqueness to each print. You can change up, you know, how things are splattered or how things are sprayed each and every time. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the outcome and the exact color of your bleach is going to depend on the contents of the garment. You can see the sweatshirt starts to have that orange color, but even after the first spray, it sets into a very deep kind of gray. Now that gray comes from the polyester that's within the hoodie. It's 50-50, so half cotton, half polyester, whereas the t-shirts I was doing were 100% cotton. Now preferably, I like those t-shirts because they have that nice kind of cream under color when you do bleach out the black. So when you're going out to get your t-shirts or hoodies, double check that and make sure it's what you're going after. Now it's also critical to make sure you wash these t-shirts by themselves. Don't throw them in another batch and fear ruining some other clothes. Throw them in the wash on a small load with some cold water and that'll help wash out any extra bleach that's stuck inside the garment.
So I hope you all enjoyed this little DIY project and feel free to show me some stuff if you actually ended up using some of the tips on one of your own projects. It's definitely easiest just to go tag me on Instagram in a post and I'd love to see what you guys come up with. One of my favorite components about bleach dyeing is the fact that you're not actually adding any paint or any image to the surface of your shirt. So it's gonna have a super soft feel the whole way through because there's no extra ink applied to it. And that being said, it's also not gonna fade. It's not like you're gonna have an ink on top of your t-shirt that has a chance of peeling off or whatever. You've actually dyed and changed the fabric of the t-shirt. So the only way to actually ruin this design is to you know stain on top of some of the newly bleached area. These t-shirts have an awesome feel as it's not a big bulky print, even though you can get a lot of information all over the shirt. It's also great to see that each of these t-shirts are totally unique from the next. All the splatters are unique and you know even if there is some discrepancies or mistakes under some of the printing, it adds a nice effect to the griminess I was going for. So I made a few of these shirts for myself as well as threw a couple on my web shop if you're interested go check them out over there. I'll have a few available so jump on them if you're interested and also be sure to check out some of the other videos I've been posting online. I broke down the entire design process last week on some of the designs you saw here today so maybe if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about those you can go check that out. Feel free to spray the like button if you enjoyed the video and also consider joining the crew by subscribing so you don't miss future uploads. That's gonna do it for me guys. Peace. Stop thief, a most arresting electronic board game from Parker Brothers.